Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. This is our episode 13 of Health is Wellness. Welcome all of our West Coast family joining us at 8.30 um, Pacific time. Welcome to our East Coast family joining us at 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. Oh man, so great to see you guys today. We're so excited about all of the activities that we have coming up. It's going to be a really, really great week. Uh, waiting for my co-host to join me very soon, uh, the Canamedic, our VP of Hemp for Minorities for Medical Marijuana. He'll be joining us soon. But I, we have so much to cover today. I don't want to waste too much time. Um, I want to get right to the meat of it. Um, so let's jump in to what we have coming up for you next week. First, I want to talk to you about Health is Wellness Week. All right, guys. So next week, um, Stanley and I will be having some in-depth conversations in regards to autoimmune disorders and specifically how those autoimmune disorders um, are used with cannabis as treatment or cannabis to help manage those symptoms. Also, how your diet how your activity, all of those things contribute to how those symptoms from those autoimmunes affect your daily life. And so I'm really excited. Um, you know, this month is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. And if you didn't know, our founder, Roz McCarthy, is a sickle cell mom. And so she's really passionate about getting information out to our communities. Um, you know, sickle cell is a disease that affects uh, mostly people of color, um, when you look at the statistics. Uh, and the issue with sickle cell is, even though it's not technically an autoimmune disorder, um, having, and there is no cure, but having a bone marrow transplant can help mitigate the effects and side effects of sickle cell. Um, and the issue with getting a bone marrow transplant is that there are not enough people of color on that bone mar marrow transplant registry. So this month we kicked off our Be The Match campaign. Uh, check out our Instagram. Be The Match campaign is just a way for you to um, learn more information. It's a way for you to donate bone marrow if you are a match or understand what that means. Um, so check out our Instagram. We'll be giving you more details about Be The Match, our campaign that will happen for the next year. So Sickle Cell on Monday, um, Monday, September 27th, will be our topic. And our lovely founder, a Sickle Cell mom, Roz McCarthy, and our medical director, Dr. Joseph Rosada, will be joining us on that Monday. Tuesday is our lupus discussion. Now, lupus is an autoimmune disorder. Um, and, and real quick, let me, let me just give you the actual definition of autoimmune. Um, a healthy immune system defends the body against disease and infection. But if the immune system malfunctions, it mistakenly attacks healthy cells, tissues, and organs called an autoimmune disease. These attacks can affect any part of the body, weakening bodily function and even turning life-threatening. Scientists know more about more than 80 autoimmune diseases, 80 of them. Some are well known, such as fibromyalgia, multiple sclerosis, lupus, and rheumatoid arthritis, while others are rare and difficult to diagnose. So these are the, the other four diseases that we're going to be talking about for next week, because when I did the research, looking at the numbers of the people that are diagnosed with these diseases the most, um, women rank at the top more than men. And then women of color are usually misdiagnosed, but um, also are very common amongst these diseases. And so we really wanted to shine a light, give some attention to these specific diseases and really dig in in depth, talk with some experts about what they know about the disease and how plants and plant medicine and cannabis can help with mitigating those 
symptoms. You know, we, we, all of us want to cure. Um, but we know that there's a lifestyle that can be adopted that can help you manage the symptoms so much better. Um, so Tuesdays are lupus day. We'll be speaking um, with Dr. Denise Vido, the lovely Dr. Denise. Um, and we'll have another guest on that day. Wednesday, we'll be talking about rheumatoid arthritis. Really excited to have a discussion with um, my acupuncturist here in Las Vegas, uh, Dr. Nina Tabor. She's going to be one of our guests that day. Um, Thursday is our multiple sclerosis day. And so we know that that is, can be really physically um, debilitating, just like lupus and rheumatoid. Um, and so we're excited to have that conversation on Thursday. And then Friday, October 1st, is going to be our fibromyalgia conversation. Um, and so we're really excited. Um, we're going to have our lovely chef Nico back on that day. Um, he is uh, has experience in treating and helping individuals with um, autoimmune disorders. And so I'm really excited about what next week is going to bring. So tune in, make sure you stay tuned in with our Instagram so you can learn um, about these different diagnoses. If you or someone you care about or someone you care for, uh, a loved one, a friend, if you know that they have been diagnosed with any of these autoimmunes, I highly recommend you tune in. We'll be streaming live each day via our Facebook, our, um, our LinkedIn, and our YouTube channel. So make sure you check that out. Do we have our guests? I mean, our um, uh, my co-host, has he joined us yet? Okay. All right. I think we're okay. All right. So join us live next week, you guys, 9 a.m. Pacific time. 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are going to have some really great conversation about these autoimmune disorders um, and what you can do, what you can learn about how plant medicine, specifically cannabis, um, can really help with these different diagnoses and, and manage the symptoms so much better. All right. So I want to go ahead and kind of get this thing going today. Do we have our see. Okay. Do we have boom, boom, boom. Hi. All right. All right. So I want to go ahead and get our guest today introduced. Really excited. Really, really excited guys. Um, we have an amazing gentleman that is known in the world of culinary arts as Chef Nico. Um, this year marks his 26th year as a nutritional coach. Guys, when you see how young this guy looks, you're gonna be wondering. Um, and as a chef and consultant, and, and I'm just so excited to have him with us today. Um, so Chef Nico, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Health is Wellness. Greetings, how is everybody doing today? Ah, oh, so grateful that you could join us. Hey, how y'all doing? Well, <laughs> Chef Nico. Yes, Chef Nico. I am so grateful that we got a chance to meet here in Las Vegas um, and a couple of months ago. And after so many conversations with you, I was so excited to hear about your program, uh, read through your, your quick read, your book, um, some really amazing and powerful stuff. So I want you to introduce you to our audience. Um, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and then explain to us how, how you became uh, a nutritional coach and chef consultant. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Well, greetings, everybody. Uh, my name is Chef Nico. I am a nutritional coach and consultant. I help CEOs, entrepreneurs achieve a greater sense of health through balancing them with nutrition. Uh, I have a great, unique looking glass in regards to nutrition. It is all about understanding the electrical conductivity in the body and how we pair plant-based electrical elements to our organic body and start creating those organic building blocks and things work out organically. So it's a really nice process. 
Uh, the synergy is great. And so far, so very good. Uh, just to be accurate, I personally do not treat anybody. What I do provide is electrical metabolic coding and charting that can go hand in hand with any medical protocol because this is the key element that is needed to assist us in becoming better with human performance and plant-based value. Okay. Wow. Okay. That, that was a mouthful. All right. Okay. So, all right. So, <laughs> so break it down okay, in, in simple terms, break it down. What is the, um, what is the, Okay, you 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 said that coding, right? You you're using coding, this mapping and coding that you do. That's what that's the specialty that you specialize in. Cool. Um, can you kind of explain to us how the coding of food applies to coding of the body? Because that's I'm assuming that's where the connection is, right? Oh. The coding of the body. Can you explain to us what that means? How, how does that how does that connect? Okay, so the way this all connects is that every human body, we have to look at it electrically. So mm -hmm. we are always putting out energy. And when I say energy, I'm talking about electrical. So we're always putting out energy. Mm -hmm. The main mm -hmm. question is, are we putting that equal amount of energy back into our body? And then the next question is, what is the equal amount? This is where coding of the metabolic rate is important. So then we can then chart particular food elements that actually go with the body. And this goes mm. hand in hand with all plant elements, which can actually segue itself very easily into the cannabis plant. Hmm. Okay. All right. Now, now you're talking my language. Okay. So, so electric foods and your electric alive body, right? Can, can you kind of break down in, into simplest terms? Because, you know, I'm a patient as well. And I, I'm not a doctor. I'm not professionally trained to understand. I'm not a nutritionist. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I feel like I'm a nutritionist in training because I, I daily I'm learning my body and I'm learning what foods help me feel alive and, and you know, full of energy like you said, um, but I'm learning firsthand and, and, you know, I'm making mistakes. I do, you know, potatoes is not good for me. Right. So right. You, you learn as you eat and consume. So how do you using this coding? How, I don't want to re re reveal any trade secrets or anything like that, but how does that, how do you use the coding to help us understand what works for our bodies? Like, how does that work? Okay. So, uh, a little bit of food science has to go into this, but what I promote and what I provide is STEM nutrition, which stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. Those four forms have to go into modern day nutrition. Why? Because it's no longer we farm or we catch our animals. We're modern day hunter gatherers. So up here, we're relying on this beautiful box or bottle showing us a pretty picture, making us believe that this is what's going to be good for us. That may not always translate electrically. The picture may look nice and you may feel that this is going to assist you. Or you may check out a, a, on a video platform and see, oh, this worked for them, but you're a different individual. So when you have a specific deficiency or a complicated issue in your body, that means that something has to be coded directly for you. It can't be an average because, well, no human is just average in regards to receiving a deficiency and recovering from that. So this is the main reason why you have to code and chart each individual. So now they have a customization to their body, which allows them to reach the next best level. Oh, okay. It's customized. Hi, there he is. Greetings. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Hi, good, good, morning, good morning, Stanley. Out, out doing the good work for the community. We know. So it's okay. Um, Stanley, this is Chef Nico. Chef Nico, this is Stanley. Stanley is our VP of Hemp 
for Minorities for Medical Marijuana. He was um, he came into our organization as the director, state director for Georgia. So that's where he's based out of. Um, and uh, I know that he was doing some community work this morning. So we are glad that you were able to join us, Stanley. Um, and 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 I don't want to um, I don't want to. Um, I want to make sure to catch you up really quick. So Chef Nico was just explaining to us um, what he specializes in when it comes to um, helping people uh, create a custom uh, 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 recipe, uh, so to speak, uh, for their bodies based on their body's electric output. Uh, what types of fruits and vegetables are good for to match with their electric output to to match that energy level. Am I explaining it right, Chef Nico? <laughs> I think I am. Just, yes. uh, okay, right. Yes. And so um, he was just getting into how he does this, how he charts or customizes that that chart for your body. Um, and, and he wasn't going to reveal any trade secrets, but I think he was just getting into how he does that and why that's so important to do for each individual, you know, you know, I'm plant based and, you know, I'm using plants to help heal my body. Um, but the more I learn uh, and understand recognizing what specific plants are good for me, somebody who is anemic, someone who has HIV, someone who is trying to cleanse and detox the body and the blood specifically, um, what nutrients and plants do I need to be consuming that will help fortify my immune system, but also give my blood the cleansers that they. So these these are the things that he's explaining that why it's so important for each individual to have a custom um, blend or a custom uh, recipe, so to speak, for, for them to consume what they should be consuming. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me on. I'm Chef Nico. I was reading up some information about you. And thank you for that overview, Nicole, um, because just from my healthcare background, one thing that we can tell patients is you have to eat the way you want to look and feel, eat the way you want to taste. So imagine if an animal ate you, what you would taste like. So creating that dietary lifestyle is very important. And as someone told me, don't forget to eat for your blood type. So it's going to be a great conversation. Thank you so much. And thanks for bringing me on. Great to have you. Great to have you, Stanley. Um, okay, Chef Nico. So like, just like Stanley was saying, right, your blood type, uh, has a lot to do with the type of foods that you should be consuming if you want to be eat, living healthy, right? So can you tell us a little bit more about this custom hack that you have created um, to try to decode the body and therefore, um, you know, give a, a formula to success for the body to to heal and, and to, um, to regenerate, so to speak, yeah. Absolutely. And, and the good thing is um, there's no such thing as secrets with what I do. It's all about education. It's all about data and research. So I, I'm going to completely unpack. Uh, there are going to be some things along the way where if you don't understand certain systems and processes, this is where the expertise comes into play. So in order to do true electrical metabolic coding and charting, there are four forms of education that are needed. It is neurological bionutrition, DNA nutrition, cellular nutrition, and atomic nutrition. Those four have to come together in order for you to accurately code and chart. Outside of that, like everything else, you could put an average on anything and you can averagely code and chart something. But when somebody has a specific deficiency or a specific complicated digestive issue, you have to become specific to the decimal point. So that's really where I come from in regards to the coding and charting. We are understanding the mapping of the brain first because that is where the supercomputer is. Just like anybody's phone or laptop, mm -hmm. it's electrical, we get that. What plugs in to the supercomputer? Central nervous system. Now the central nervous system now bands around every part of the human body to connect to all your major organs. It connects 
all of the necessary cells, not only in your bone, but your blood and your muscle tissues, so on and so forth. So understanding that path of logic, there is an opportunity to code and chart each human successfully. Why? Because plants come from the ground and the ground has one key element called fulvic mineral. That is the first time that earth has a connection just the way the spine connects to the brain. That is the first connection that earth has to plants. So fulvic mineral creates electrical conductivity between soil and root. The questions and the further unpacking comes into, well, what's the quality of our soil? Are we really growing our food by the source of the sun? Are we changing the molecular properties of these seeds to grow properly? Now we have to start doing a little more deep dive into how we begin to code and chart each individual based off of their situation. And this is where it just happens to be that I've been a chef for quite a while. So I actually understand how to trap these elements when you do have to cook. And cooking does not always mean fire. You can actually cook with acids, meaning lime, lemon, apple cider vinegar, and so on. So there's a variety and it becomes vast. I mean, <laughs> it's almost, the algorithm is almost infinite in regards to how many options there are out there. So when people say, oh, well, what can I eat? How do I, how do, I do this? I always make sure that I chart everybody at least 60% of their energy intake, meaning that if you happen to be a human, like we all are and have that flaw of 40%, you want to grab a hot dog, a pizza, a hamburger, that's fine. Mathematically, I have you beaten out. I'm 60% over. So it will always begin to generate a level of recovery faster than a level of deficiency. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so... The foods, the electric foods that we eat, right, uh, are are replenishing our energy, are replenishing our nerves, our cells, our cellular system, right? They are, they feed all of that, right? From my understanding, in dealing with the research that I've I've come to find in regards to a, a virus like HIV, for example, or even herpes, for example. When you're talking about a virus like that, that lives inside of your blood, that lives inside of the cells, right? The, the philosophy of a Dr. Sebi, who we know, you know, we hear about alkaline diets and electric foods from him and his teachings, um, is understanding that these viruses do not like electric live foods. They like the processed sugar hot dog <laughs> foods, right? And that's what they eat. That's what they feed on, literally, in your cells, in your blood, because all of that all of that stuff goes into all of those places, right? Not just through your digestive system and out. No, it, it stays inside of your, your body. And so when you put those type of foods and, and fuel for those viruses to feed on inside of your body, then they continue to live and thrive, right? Because those viruses yeah. cannot live outside of the body. They live inside the body, inside the host, right? Same for COVID, same concept, right? When, you, when you're feeding it what it needs, then yes, you're going to have more severe cases, more, worse side effects and all of these other things that come along that do damage because of what you, it's allowed to stay in the system longer, right? It's allowed to feed on what you're feeding it. And so when you stop feeding it, it essentially dies. Is that the right concept? Is that the right, am I making the right analogy there? Absolutely. And just studying the path of logic, when it comes to sizes, cell is larger than a virus. So that means that mathematically, if a gang of virus shows up, it can get on many cells faster than a cell can regenerate. So let's just reverse engineer that concept and follow another path of logic. What's smaller than a virus? 
atoms. So when you start providing atomic nutrition, mm. now you start flanking the army of viruses. And before they even know, boom, a larger number, the same way that the virus went around the cell, you have atomic nutrition going around the virus. But on a food science level, atomic nutrition can communicate with the cell and the DNA along with the powerhouse of the cell, which is the mitochondria, which is the second DNA strand per every cell. So now you can almost double, triple your results by steering atomic nutrition in the looking glass of most situations and through a timed protocol, meaning it takes 30 days to make or break a new habit. 60 days to enforce right. that habit and right. 90 days to make it auto receptive. So literally on a natural level, remember, we're not talking about synthetic chemistry that creates immediate blockers, which causes the symptom to stop showing itself. But it doesn't mean that anything stops the transmission. Oh, right. Mm. Right. So following the path of logic, we have to come up with do it yourself simple solutions at home that empower you to understand while you're incorporating other paths of solutions, whether it's a clinician path of solution, whether it's a homeopathic path of solution, it's all about providing these different paths of solutions. So while all this is taking place, you can still empower yourself while you're waiting for your hormonal blood scan to come back and get to the next best level. You can still apply more because that's what really provides human performance is you being the one that's providing more. Mm. Absolutely. And I'd like to chime in. And I'm sitting here thinking about some of the information you've given us, Chef Nico. And for any viewers who may be watching this to where mitochondria and atomic cells may be a little bit above you. Well, listen, so the way he's describing this is your cells is a piece of fruit. Now, imagine a bunch of locusts on that piece of fruit. So you've got a grasshopper eating your piece of fruit, which is your cell. That grasshopper would be the virus. Well, you need something smaller than the virus. How do we attack the virus? Think of ants on a locust. So your ants would be the actual atoms at the cellular level that's helping attack that locust, which is attacking your cell. And back to what Nicole was saying, um, Acidic disease processes. So we have to understand, like back to they say about Dr. Sebi, alkaline and acids. Okay, you know, you clean up an acid with a base, a base with an acid. Well, our bodies are so sensitive, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, people wonder how sometimes they get acne after a bad meal, or for a lot of females, their uh, pH balance is often thrown off from some simple things, even as simple as using the wrong soap. Our bodies has the most finite pH balance, and it is 7.35 to 7.45. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. So for anyone that may have different disease processes, especially um, type 1 diabetes, when those people don't take their insulin and that sugar is through the roof, remember, ladies and gentlemen, sugar is an acid. So it attacks the cells. It eats things away. And back to what Chef Nico was saying, you can also cook with acid. So if people, if that went over your head, think about ceviche. You know, a lot of people like ceviche. And the first time I saw that made and I saw them put, you know, the, the limes and the stuff. And I'm like, you know, where's the heat? We didn't need heat. So great point, uh, Chef Nico. And that's some great information. You know what? Can I just touch on ceviche real quick? Um, ceviche, even though it's great food, when you study the data and research, it was the first time that us as humans had an opportunity to understand how to actually cook animal protein. And this was before we ever had fire. We may have seen it a few times. There's a point in our human DNA where we didn't know what fire was. So understanding some of these elements that actually cook not only plant-based elements, but animal proteins that's key before, hey, Nico, give me a recipe that I can cook up in the kitchen. Well, let's understand the value of raw first, because that's where the electrical conductivity is. If you add fire, an element that starts to subtract the electrical value, 
it'll still work, but we have to understand what is it that's going to give us the premium level of electrical conductivity. Awesome, awesome ceviche example. <laughs> Um, I love ceviche and now I love cauliflower ceviche. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's so good, Stanley. It's so good. Like, or or you could use um um the um the the, the like I've had brine um the fruit, the 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 Thai fruit with the spines on the outside. Well, jackfruit. jackfruit. I love jackfruit. jackfruit. Yeah, you could do it with jackfruit too. Like you could brine it or pickle it almost, and then you could use it in a ceviche, make it like uh, like crab meat in a ceviche, because that's what it t tastes like. Oh, so good. <laughs> yes. Mango ceviche is one of my favorite. I'm a Caribbean man, so I love mango ceviche. Yes. Uh, sometimes even in uh, the Caribbean, we'll call it chow. Chow, that's little, right. Like, yes. Uh, yes. Mango. Yes. yes, it's one of my favorite dishes. So on the roadside in Trinidad, you're going to find a coconut man, you're going to find a mango man, and you're going to find the chow man. <laughs> you find that double man, you go get that chow. Yep. And yep. You Shark and bait, let's go. <laughs> yes, you can make anything into chow. You can make cucumber chow, you can make star fruit chow, you can make pineapple chow. It is the... There's this seasoning in Trinidad called green seasoning, you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so listen, they, it's 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 from a plant that they call the Mexican cilantro. Um, but, da, yes, Shadow Benny, <laughs> and it makes this green sauce that they put into everything. They season their meat with it. They season all of their dishes with it. Everything that you've eaten from a Trinidad cuisine, you've had green seasoning in it. And this is what they use in the chow and. I have only found one place here in the United States at the Atlanta Decap Farmer's Market in Atlanta, Georgia, that has Shadow Benny. And when we found it, my mom and I were like screaming inside of the grocery store because uh, the only place you could get it is in Trinidad. I mean, it grows wild out there everywhere. So I'm, I got to look side, I sidetracked. Okay, so so tell us, Jeff Nico, please give us some pointers because we've got people on the show that are watching today We've talked about these four diseases, the autoimmune diseases specifically, that we are going to be touching on uh, throughout this next week. And so lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and fibromyalgia. I know that you've had experience. I know that you are not clinically seeing patients. But I know that you've had experience in, the, in, the, in this fabulous formula that you've come up with um, to help people decode <laughs> their food. Um, decode the food that is that is right for their body. So can you tell us a little bit about some tips that these individuals could take with them from this conversation about what they should be doing or trying to do um, just to kind of get started um, in their inside their own kitchens? How, what, what are some tips that you can give people just to start Absolutely. without Absolutely. knowing their DNA? <laughs> right, right. And that's that's uh, this, this is the beauty of being able to be transparent with food science and understanding STEM nutrition. So we're going to go back to that big word mitochondria. It's the second DNA strand in every human cell. What does that mean food wise? Takes three families to connect. And these are three keys that have to happen at the same time. Sulfur family, B family and antioxidant family. Those three families have to come together at the same time. That's the key code to assist with the mitochondria. Now- So real quick, Chef, let me stop you real quick. You said sulfur? Mm -hmm. Sulfur family. Yes, I know what sulfur is. And then what's the second, what was the second one, B? B family, correct. Okay, like vitamin B? Like the vitamin B family, it is vast. There are okay, so okay, many. got and it. When I speak this, I'm only speaking plant based. We'll get into supplements for like maybe two minutes, but this is all the need to actual chew. Like you have a very large jawbone that is but less than an inch and a half away from cerebral blood flow. If you're not using this ball to actually create pressure there is no stimulation of electrical conductivity. You throw a pill back and swallow, this never moved. Mm -hmm. So this is why we have to actually, they call it mastication. Please don't get that word confused. You have to actually press. This is why you have, like when you get tight, the bone starts popping out. You, you have to actually press that and massage that 
process. So B family foods. And what was the third? The third one is antioxidant. Foods. Antioxidant, right? I know what that so means. Let's make this really simple. Let's give us let's give a real simple example. Anybody who likes chili Philly cheesesteaks, you're eating mitochondria. Why? Onions, peppers, oregano, onion, sodium family, peppers, B family, oregano, antioxidant. If anybody likes to have avocado with a fresh herb, avocado takes care of two. Me too. Avocado takes care of two. It is the sodium family and B family together. So now all you got to do is put a fresh herb and all of your fresh herbs are antioxidants. So now we're just unpacking this and making this extremely easy. And this is what shows up in your chart because what you don't know, you don't know, but this is how you transition the education that is a deep dive, but it is extremely necessary right now. We have 80 years of just following the path of synthetic chemistry, foods that have zero energy to them. They look the part, they smell the part, but what is it doing for your body? Is it triggering your body to actually stimulate itself? Remember the human body was built outside of what we know, but we do know it was built in a level of excellence and it was built to stimulate itself from elements that come from earth. So this is the main reason why we give some of these examples. Uh, we can go on and on, but those are some very key startups. In addition to that, rosemary water, very, very, very important. How do you do rosemary water? You take a stem of rosemary, real rosemary. Please don't ask me, should I use dry rosemary, Chef Nico? Real rosemary, electrical conductivity, and you drop it into water. Water, by definition, is free of nutrients, but it is needed in all forms of living life. You let this cold infuse for 24 hours. After 24 hours, you remove this stem. What does that mean? That means that five key elements from rosemary have now bonded into the water because scientifically anything that touches for more than three seconds has bonded. So if you have 24 hours, you are making sure that you have these elements. And what are those five elements? Antiviral, antibacterial, antidepressant, anti-inflammatory, and the last one balances every human hormone. There we go. Somebody else tell me a liquid that they've been doing on a regular, mathematically, that allows that to happen. If everybody likes water, think about how hard it's pushed. If you drink too much water, you can overdo it with your cells, mm -hmm. thus creating weak cell walls, thus creating leaky cells. If you have nutrition in your water and people, oh, you mean like cucumber and lime? Kind of. <laughs> but are you doing the education on cucumber and lime? It may have a few elements, but we want those five key problems. Remember, we're doing a looking glass on what you can do at home. Rosemary, an adaptogen herb, five key elements. You can always change your life with that and start with that. Extremely important. Okay, I'm growing my I'm growing my rosemary garden today. I'm going I'm going when I leave this conversation, I'm going to get my rose some rosemary. I, right. I had no idea. Wow. And it's very cost effective. Rosemary costs very little and you only need one stem for a gallon of water. Awesome. Well, I'll tell you what, Chef Nico, I have a question for you. So we're talking about foods and what to really power the body. Now, something that I've learned from working with underserved communities, at-risk communities, and they're really the vulnerable health communities, um, especially in a lot of urban settings, one thing that we realize is there are a lot of food deserts in America. There are people in communities that don't have access to fresh foods, fresh herbs, fresh vegetables. And a lot of people in our community, especially persons of color, I realize when you try to teach them how to eat healthy, drink healthy, they oh, it tastes bad. No, it actually tastes good. The problem is our palates have been more so curtailed for the fats, the salts, and the sweets. Processed. Yes, processed foods. So 
some of the beginning ways that we could start to introduce these products or introduce this in type type lifestyle to people that may not have the access to start weaning them away from the sodas, from the honey buns, from the hot takis, you know, and things of that nature to try to push them towards it. Because what we don't want attendees to think, guys, we don't want you to think that today overnight we want you to throw away all of your stuff and replace everything. As he said, it's a transition. It takes 30 days, then 60 days. You want to create this lifestyle and, and reinforce this lifestyle. What are a couple of the simple lifestyle changes that we could give to some of our viewers and some of our friends and family members that may help them if they don't have access to all the necessary fruits and vegetables? What are some of the key things that they can start with at home? Just the small things. Okay. Two things. First one. You're going to go on to Google and you're going to type in a very key statement. It's called Nutrition Fit Only the Strong Survive. That is a book. I wrote that book during the pandemic, published that book within three months of 2020 to provide accountability from an expert that allows you to have simple do-it-yourself at home solutions to curb and mitigate all the stress of food deserts and problematic issues that may be going on within disenfranchised black and brown communities. Why? Because within these communities, everybody normally has a phone. I can go down to the corner and see a homeless man. And he on his phone. So phones are big. Next thing, Amazon Prime. Please do not tell me that you do not have Amazon Prime or know somebody that does not. You can get rosemary to your door. You can mm -hmm. get some of these food elements to your door. You can get hemp seeds and chia seeds and non-allergenic seeds to your door. What are we really up against? The program. The brain does not care about you. That's a cold, hard statement. The mind does. That's where the soul and the energy and the power and all that great. But the brain is a program. So if you have programmed the brain to enjoy the honey buns and the sodas and the and whatever it may be, that brain is the program set. You have to now force yourself to go through a 30 day program. It's not a detox. You just have to force yourself to do one thing mathematically for 30 days. And I guarantee you the way everybody else has enjoyed rosemary water you'll be able to do the same. It's extremely important to understand that you are up against yourself. And yeah. for the past 80 years, the systems and processes have made it very easy on themselves to put you against yourself. The moment you're blocked in, it just makes it easier to put a fear factor on what you're already blocked in on and say, well, here's the synthetic chemistry that can help you. But remember, following the path of logic, synthetic chemistry came from organic chemistry and organic chemistry came from alchemy. From plants. So so tell us what tell us what happened those 80 years ago, um, because I know that it's directly linked to the prohibition of cannabis, um, which which then became the prohibition of naturopathic medicine. And so tell us, explain to us, because I know that you understand the science, because part of this cellular level of understanding um, with plant medicine um, and, and the body has to do with one of my favorite systems in the body, the endocannabinoid system. <laughs> um, and so tell us, kind of, kind of explain to us how and why um, it, that, that process started 80 years ago, what that has led us up to now and how our endocannabinoid system that we as human beings just discovered about 20 years ago. Um, but it is, it has been around for millions of years for as long as he, as any vertebrate animal on this planet has lived. Um, and longer than that, because the, the cannabis plant was here before that. So can you explain to us a little bit about um, how that progress happened and, and then how do we bring it back into what the endocannabinoid system is and, and what it has to do with that, um, creating that balance in the body? Fantastic. All right. Get ready, y'all. Put on your thinking caps because it's about to get onto a nice little ride. This is the great, great Nico screen machine. All right. So check this out. Back in 1940, we had a very key thing called Swanson's TV dinner. 
Swanson's TV dinner created one thing and it's called convenience. But that convenience became catastrophic because it took us all away from the family table of how we would organically say, how is your day? How are you feeling? How are you doing? And it sat us in front of a box and it tells us a vision. In the process of telling us a vision, certain ads started coming out that started showing other oils, canola oil, vegetable oil. You no longer saw the olive oils. You no longer saw the grass-fed butters. It started to make things more convenient. This started putting organically more inflammatory receptors into the food. We speed it up to the 80s. We had a great president by the name of Reagan, but he also gave the okay for corporations to patent seeds. In the process of patenting seeds, it now gave corporations the opportunity to plant their seeds right next to all the great mom and pop farms in America. And they waited until the natural process of the equinox winds that came in every spring and every fall blowing their seeds that they own onto mom and pop farms that have been around for 120, 150 so on years. Well, now all they have to do is send their soil testers over to the mom and pop farm, test their soil, knock on the door and say, hey, you know what? Um, our seeds are tested on your land. We didn't give you permission to produce our seeds. Your farm is ours now. And they went through 15, 20 years of doing that. And they had over 500 plus lawyers ready to ground and pound anybody in the court system to either lay down or get with us. Over a period of time, regular farming, agronomical science, regular farming was taken over and industrial farming took place. Once that took place, it no longer allowed the cycle of life to give fulvic mineral back to topsoil. So now food is no longer as premium as it was 80 years ago, meaning that one apple, you got to eat 80 now. One carrot, you got to eat 100 plus now just to equal the value of the food. So when it comes to cannabis, you can't really mess with that plant. That plant is amazing. Um, it, it embodies the value of atomic nutrition. Atomic nutrition comes from carbon atom 12. Carbon atom 12 electrically vibrates at six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. You've never heard of a GMO cannabis plant. It is one of the most challenging things to GMO. Mind you, GMO really isn't that bad because it's just modifying the organism. You cannot take carbon atom 12 outside of it. It's the melanated code. That's why everything has color, including weed. Everything that has color is carbon atom 12, which makes atomic nutrition extremely versatile and extremely easy to code and chart. Now, when it comes to cannabis, we have about a hundred different, you know, varieties of that plant. But then we have terpenes, which have 629 species. Now, how do we connect this? How did Chef Nico connect all of this? Well, it just happens to be that vitamin A and terpenoids share an isoprenoid. That's a chain. They all share that. Once you understand where the linking of this is, I dare anybody to go, just Google it. Foods high in vitamin A. It's almost endless. What does that mean? That means now you can start supporting a terpene profile that supports through CBD, CBG, THC, and all the rest of the cannabis family. This allows nutrition to go hand in hand with cannabis. It no law, it, it dumbs down the factor of, oh, I'm just gonna get high. There's certain 
cannabinoids that are out there that allow the body to flourish because it stimulates the receptors in the body. For example, your peripheral organs, that is in the endocrine, the, the, the endocannabinoid system. Understanding these organs, these organs have topical cellular receptors. They're in the body and they're in the brain. If these receptors are not reacting accordingly, you're not going to have that connection with cannabis. This I is think why we have I a slide. I think we have a slide um, to our producer uh, that kind of shows you what those organs are. Yeah, here right. they are. Now look, now look at these organs, both men and female reproductive organs, your lungs, your kidney, your liver, your intestinal tract. All of these are extremely important to understand. Why? Because, well, the endocannabinoid system involves psychological process. It involves appetite, pain, uh, sensation, mood, and memory. This is extremely important to understand. The endocrine or the endocannabinoid system you might as well look at it as the THC of the body. Now, THC is the primary psychoactive chemical. We make our own cannabinoid chemical in our body. So anandamide, it's called right. anandamide, yes. And the <laughs> endocannabinoid system, it allows all this to connect. Mm -hmm. CBD mm -hmm. actually supports the production of this system. THC is a very important connection. It's a key that allows this support. And before all of that, you have CBN. Mm -hmm. The mother, CBG, CBN, the, the, yes. the mother cannabinoids, right? right. And, and thank you to Dr. Denise Vado for um, sharing that slide with us. Uh, she was last month's guest. And so she is a cannabis epidemiologist based at the University of Miami, and she's doing some amazing work. We're going to have her back on on Tuesday, Stanley, for our um, for our health is wellness week to talk about um, lupus. Uh, Chef Nico, uh, I, I just wanted to, because we've only got a few more minutes left. I know it, it goes by so fast. Uh, Stanley, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, I know he gave you all some amazing information and everybody's absorbing it. We're reading the comments and we're really thankful for all the input. Back to what he was saying about genetically modified foods and how they've changed over time. I was actually reading some research about the wheat plant. If you remember when you were a child, a loaf of bread after about a week would get mold on it. Now right. you can actually have a loaf of bread for several weeks and wonder why it's not molded and you just throw it away. They've done research into the seed and the actual structure of the wheat plant. If you take a wheat plant that's been grown industrial within the Sun Belt and compare that to a wheat plant sample from 100 to 150 years ago, they are now two totally separate plants, two different plants with different molecular structure, and they actually produce a different product. So we're noticing a lot of people are having sensitivity to gluten and things of that nature. It's because the plants have changed. So this may be your introduction to starting your own small herb garden. You can put one in a windowsill. You can start with cilantro. And back to the antioxidants, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here from the chef. They are important. And there are other plants to get your omegas and your antioxidants from. Um, I'd like to plug in uh, hemp and fork because their hemp seeds are a vital resource for nutrients for people who may be deficient in some of these areas. Now, we're not going to say one thing can give you everything. But as Chef Nico has given you today, he's given you examples and he's given you key plants that can start to rebuild your body at the cellular level. So again, thank you so much, Chef Nico. Real really quick, appreciate let's just connect it. the hemp seed with CBD. CBD is known as the king of anti-inflammatory. Well, then let's connect that with hemp seed, as the brother said, because hemp seed is the king seed of anti-inflammatory. Why? Because omega-3. We have to understand our ratios. If you have more omega-6 in your body, 
that is stimulating inflammation receptors in your body. People say, oh, inflammation, but you need inflammation receptors. If you were to hit your hand and it get bruised, that bruise shows that your body's working correctly because the inflammation receptor responded. But if your ratio is off, you're going to find more of your major organs or your, uh, your, most of your primary organs that the endocannabinoid system supports, they're going to be more inflamed. So by mm. consuming a non-allergenic seed like hemp seed, and you can have so much fun with this, you don't have to rely on me to do it. Do your research, understand, do a simple Google on recipes with hemp seeds, how to enjoy hemp seeds, smoothies with hemp seeds. Just go into the hemp seed. You will be blown away with how much plant-based protein it provides, how much mm -hmm. omega-3 it provides. Mm -hmm. And once again, this is the math. The same way that the brother broke down the math on the wheat, you can reverse engineer that for yourself because that took time, hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. You don't have to take hundreds of years. All you need is 30 days to make a new pattern within the brain. The brain will then begin to attract itself to more foods that support human performance. Oh, brilliant. Wow, Chef Nico, thank you so, so much. I mean, it, we all know uh, in a cannabis world how anti-inflammatory CBD is. Um, it's part of the marketing that is used to help push it and promote it out right now. It's why you see it in coffee shops. It's why you see it at your barber shop. It's why you see it at TJ Maxx. Um, so the, understanding how these phytocannabinoids, because that's what they are, um, really help to electrify the body, really help to um, bring the body back into homeostasis um, on a cellular level. Uh, thank you so much for this wealth of knowledge about the human body and the foods that we're consuming. Um, oh, oh, we have a question before we go. Um, can you give quick specific uh, to help for anemia? Uh, I'm anemic as well. That's a great question. I'm so glad you asked it, sis. Um, yeah, I, I know that that has to do with fortifying the blood, making sure that the blood has enough iron. You know, I refuse to do um, um, iron supplements. And so I know that I have to eat a lot of dark leafy greens. Are there others? Is there some other advice that, um, that you could give us in that regards? Yes. Key advice. Be very wary of what dark leafy greens you're eating. Okay. Plants have been on Earth for 3.5 billion years. That means they have adapted to all levels of chemicals before humans even showed up. So let alone what happened after humans showed up. You must think of light above ground leafy greens. Dense above ground leafy greens are not good for anybody with anemia. And that means your kale. That means your collards. Spinach is another one and romaine. Why spinach and romaine? It's been on the E. coli list for the past seven years. How does that happen? When the hurricane season comes through and floods out some of these farm animal farms and now all of that poo gets into the waterways, well, the neighboring farms that have spinach and romaine, the groundwater is now polluted. Contaminated. And now the roots, they don't have a chance. Remember, they're mechanical. They know to go down and pull up. So if this is what's coming up through the waterways, this is how E. coli organically gets into spinach and romaine. And you can't boil this out or apple cider vinegar this out. The only thing you can do is pivot. And you pivot to Swiss chard. You can pivot to watercress. You can pivot to all of your fresh herbs, okay? Bok choy. We can move into another... Feel enraged, but pivot while you're feeling enraged, okay? But just don't go for spinach because, oh, I love my spinach. Cut that out. Make sure wow. you find a way to position yourself to win. These titles are what they only are. They're titles, but you can connect the dots on a plant-based electrical level and position yourself to win. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So, wow. You hear that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? Um, you know, I know you guys, you Google things, you know, we have the power of the internet, 
But Chef Nico is really giving you some valuable life skills that could potentially save your life or extend your life. And back to be sure to go and pick up his book, ladies and gentlemen, because if you say, well, I can't afford to eat healthy, I can't afford to do this. Well, how much is your life worth to you? And as we say, health is wellness. So if it's important to you, I would say pick up that book and start today because these tips that Nicole is giving you, that Chef Nico is giving you, a lot of people who may watch this, they may go on a diet after watching this. Oh, I'm going to go on a diet. I tell people you don't go on a diet if you want to be successful. A diet is everything that you consume to keep your body alive. You don't go on a diet. You live on a diet. So change your dietary lifestyle. And that is how you take charge of your health. So thank you so much, Chef Nico, for that. Absolutely. Yes. And if anybody is confused along the way, because I saw a lot of spinach and collards and kale responses, <laughs> I, I designed to disrupt your brain pattern. If you need to do a deep dive with me, please go to Chef Nico, get on my calendar, and we can have a discovery call, 15 minute free to understand how we position you to the next best level coaching is about championing you to the next best level. So let me hear what you have to say, and we will do just that. In addition, go get the book, Nutrition Fit, Only the Strong Survive. It's been a pleasure with you guys. I appreciate it. Oh, Chef Nico, thank you so, so, so much. You guys, you heard it, chefnico.com. Uh, make sure you use take two, two Ks, um, N-I-K-K-O, uh, dot com and um, and man, Chef Nico, thank you so very much. I'm so excited um, to get started with this brother's program. We are going to be getting started here in the next couple of weeks and I will be showing you all the progress. I'm, I'm really excited about what new information I can learn um, as I embark on this healing journey um, for me, for myself and then being able to share that with so many others. So thank you again. I really appreciate you coming on and being a part of our show today. We look forward to seeing you on Friday. We're going to be talking about fibromyalgia. Um, everybody, um, make sure you join us next week. We are going to be live each day, Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time and 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, for our monthly, I mean, our week long of health is wellness. Uh, join us next week. Um, and thank you again, everyone. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, and we're really looking forward to seeing you all next week. We're going to get some more in-depth understanding about these different diseases um, and what you can do to help uh, mitigate those, those symptoms. And we love you all. Thanks again for joining Minorities for Medical Marijuana Health is Wellness. We really appreciate it. See you all soon. Thanks again.